There are and have been in Dearborn a number of buildings whose architecture and history have put the city of Dearborn in the national and sometimes even global eye. One of these very special buildings was the Ford Rotunda. While the building was in and of itself remarkable, the truly incredible thing was the memories, particularly Christmas memories it created for millions of people over the years. Designed by Ford favored architect Albert Kahn, the original Rotunda building was the single largest building at the Chicago World's Fair in 1934. The exhibition covered 11 acres, five of which were a landscaped park designed and executed by the Ford Motor Company. The Detroit Symphony Orchestra played there for three months, doing two concerts a day. Millions of people visited the impressive exhibit hall during its 159-day stay in Chicago. The theme was American Progress, Agriculture and Industry. The rotunda was divided into five main exhibits. The first was an old-time workshop. This was used to show visitors how things were done in 1850. Mr. Ford was very big on showing how things were made. His first car was included in this exhibit. The drama of transportation was the second display. It showed the progression of transportation throughout time, beginning with Egyptian chariots. The industrial exhibit was next. This area showed the actual machinery that was used in the plants. Most dramatically, this area sported the suspension of three cars from the rim of a supported, welded steel wheel. Henry Ford never lost sight of the fact that he was born and raised on a farm. In the soybean exhibit, he included an actual barn from the Ford homestead that was dismantled and reassembled at the exhibition. The final exhibit was entitled The Roads of the World. In it, an actual road was broken down into 19 sections representing various countries. Remarkable as all this was, the real star of the exhibition was the lighting. Electrical engineers traveled from all around the country to see the remarkable light show. There were 9,000 floodlights that created the illusion of a rainbow around the Rotunda building. Another interesting and memorable use of light from the Rotunda was a torch of light that shone to the height of one mile. This light show that occurred daily at the World's Fair used 6,000 kilowatts of electricity, which was more than a third of all the electrical power that was used by the entire World's Fair in 1933. The Rotunda Building was brought to Dearborn in 1935. The skeleton of the building, consisting of 680 tons of structural steel, was moved to a location across from the Ford Administration Building on Schaefer Road, one mile south of Michigan Avenue. It was reconstructed and revamped. One of the most important changes was the replacement of the plaster exterior with Indiana limestone. Theme of progressive engineering and research. It will portray the worldwide significance of the automotive industry. The building was massive and beautiful. Its five-doored main entrance was enhanced by a white sculpture figure in bas relief against a blue panel. The figure symbolized power, beauty, speed, safety, and thrift, the ideals of the Ford automobile. This dream garden is one of the ever-changing shows that draw a million and a half visitors each year. Within the walls of this new rotunda building, were the most wonderful exhibits featured at the World's Fair in 1934, including the giant globe that electronically illustrated Ford's activities all around the world.
This new building had meeting rooms, banquet rooms, and a restaurant for visitors. It fulfilled its intention completely as the incredible gateway to the Rouge Plant Tours. One of the most remembered and beloved things that the Ford Rotunda provided for the citizens of Dearborn and its environs was its spectacular Christmas fantasy program. Every year from December 1st until Christmas Day, the Rotunda was transformed into a Christmas fantasy enjoyed by children of all ages. The exterior of the Rotunda was very simply decorated with holiday garland and sported the typical Merry Christmas greeting in large letters across the front of the building. The inside, however, was the stuff of dreams, more accurately, Christmas dreams. There were a multitude of little Christmas scenes all around the Rotunda. As you entered the building, there was a 38-foot Christmas tree, complete with huge bulbs and 17,000 lights. And this was just the beginning. There were small Christmas scenes all over the Rotunda, including a nativity scene and a miniature circus which had over 15,000 individually hand-carved pieces. The doll display was one of the most revered in the entire Tri-County area. Hundreds of dolls were dressed to be given away by the Goodfellows at Christmas to the underprivileged children. The sheer number of dolls and the different outfits were incredible to look at. As families waited in long lines to visit with Santa, they were treated to these incredible Christmas displays. Once the children were done visiting with Santa and confiding to him their deepest desires for things to be left under the tree, as they left the building, they were treated to six live reindeer at the rear exit of the building. I recently had the opportunity to revisit the Fort Rotunda with my dearest guest to date, my very own sister, Jeannie Canellis. Well, we're here today to talk about the Ford Rotunda that we both went to when we were children. I remember going with our cousins and we wanted to go and get the... I wanted to show the audience what my sister was after, what every child in Dearborn a, was after. It was a combination coloring book, activity book, etc. It's pretty nice. But in order to get one, you had to go see Santa. Mm -hmm. So we stood in line to go see Santa because that was the only way we could get the book. And all the way up the line, because it was kind of like an incline and you'd have to go and Santa would be sitting up, up above there. And we were ask each other, George, what are you gonna ask for? I don't know, Jean, what are you gonna ask for? <laughs> George, what are you gonna ask for? We did this all the way. What we asked for finally, I have no idea. But we got the book, we were happy campers and we left. Well, as long as you got the book, I guess that's That was the important thing. Well, aren't we lucky to have these wonderful Christmas oh, yes, memories? Oh, they were. I also spoke with Dearborn Historical Commissioner Rosemary Jefferson, who took her own children to this Christmas spectacular in the 1950s. I read about the, the long, long lines to see Santa Claus. There were long, long lines everywhere. That must have been a very special place then. Well, everybody in Dearborn wanted to go and see Santa at the Rotunda. And do you remember any of the displays? Oh, the displays were out of this world. Mm -hmm. The Ford Motor Company really went all out on decorating in that place. That's right. And so you have some other interesting facts about the Rotunda and what went on there. They had choirs from the Dearborn schools mm -hmm. come in, both junior high and senior high groups uh, came in at intervals after school to sing on certain days. It was quite lovely. On November 9, 1962, this magnificent building was destroyed by a fire, 
caused by hot tar igniting the roof, which was being repaired. Thanks to the quick thinking of the Ford Motor Company employees and the remarkable efforts of the Dearborn Fire Department, no one was killed in the fire, and the Ford archives were saved. However, the building itself was destroyed, and there was an estimated $15 million worth of damage. Included in the loss was over a quarter of a million dollars worth of Christmas decorations. Perhaps this loss is what prompted Teresa and Karen Johnson to take matters into their own hands. Teresa Johnson, who was four years old in 1962, turned to her older sister Karen, who was eight at the time, to find a solution to where Santa was going to stay while in Dearborn for his annual Christmas ride through the city. They wrote Santa the following letter. Dear Santa Claus, this is to let you know that the Ford Rotunda has burned down. You, your elves, and reindeer will need some place to stay when you come to Detroit at Christmas time. We have a big house and would like for you all to stay at our house this year. My mother is a good cook and will keep you nice, fat, and jolly, eating the yummy she fixes for you. We have a great big basement which you and your elves can use for a workshop to make and store Christmas toys. We have a nice large backyard with a fence where your reindeer can stay. Please come and stay with us at our house this Christmas season now that you can't stay at the Ford Rotunda. Sincerely yours, Karen Johnson and her sister, Teresa. The Johnson girls believed in a dream of kindness and generosity. They believed then in all that was the Ford Rotunda at Christmas time. The Ford Rotunda has been memorialized and remembered by virtually millions of people around the world. When Ford announced in March of 1963 that they had made the decision to level the remains of the Rotunda and not rebuild, there was a collective sigh of disappointment from those who had visited this grand place, especially at Christmas time. The Ford Rotunda at Christmas time embodied all that the holiday season is supposed to offer to us, generosity, heart, and hope. The Dearborn Historical Museum offers you the same sentiment. Happy holidays for Dearborn, then and now. I'm Helen K. Mamalakis.